Year Eleven: The Second Rule of Sankas. It's spring in the fourth year since the arrival of Emperor Sankas, also known as 1061. The beginning of spring is fairly uneventful. I begin mining out a channel from the cave river to fill up our inner moat. Construction goes as planned, and it is working by the end of spring. However, in mid-spring, things start to happen. Yay! Some moron decides to kill himself by starving. Fath Conagir, peasant, is unconscious. His head is severely injured. His left upper leg is lightly injured. He is very drowsy and miserable. Then the elves arrive. A few kobolds show up after that to steal some goodies. They don't get far though, since right after they show up, the goblins are upon us. A vile force of darkness has arrived. What appears to be three squads pour in from the west, one in the northwest to southwest. They immediately begin moving southeast to the fortress. They see those kobolds I mentioned earlier, and they dispatch them. With the kobolds dead, they move swiftly towards the fortress. Unluckily for them, I manage to lock all the entrances and get my dwarves inside before they're able to take the doors. Emperor Sankus, being great as he is, immediately options for the fiery death option. Pull the lever. The magma's out. It becomes lava. It slowly makes its way toward the invaders, and then contact. Burnt goblin can be smelt throughout the fortress and probably the entire region. Needless to say. The goblins are gone. Things proceed for normal until a few weeks later, when a new baddie shows up. The bronze colossus Lolum Abiralod has come. He is also known as Lolum Romantic Day. For the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna post this, and hopefully it'll explain how the colossus died. Pull the lever. Sometime after the assault, we get a very small batch of immigrants, mostly fucking nobles. Nothing useful. We could have used a bunch of fucking peasants at least. Lots of hauling needs done. By the close of spring, I, Emperor Sankus, had begun to revenge on my arch nemesis, Judicator Mystic Mongol. First, to tease the prey, I starve and dehydrate him in his newly assigned room. While he's busy, trapped in his room, I set up a lever to an elephant cage. I unlock his door, and he walks through the room. The lever is pulled, and the elephant is released. Mystic Mongol, being the fool he is, attempts to wrestle the elephant. Amazingly, he's not instantly killed. In fact, he merely sustains a badly broken leg. He hobbles after the now fleeing elephant. However, the elephant soon meets its end in our traps. He now lies useless in his own room. I didn't wish to kill him, as that would merely lead to a replacement. He'll suffer in his room until his own kind forgets about him, where he will slowly starve to death alone. Spring is over. Summer begins. Mystic Mongol posted, Yo, man, what? I didn't actively hurt you. You committed a crime, and you feel the need to sick an elephant on me after stripping me of any weapons. Uncool, dude. Sankus posted, Well, to be honest, I wouldn't have done it if you weren't a noble, since they're easily replaced, and the law ones are even more annoying when they jail my metalsmith or whatever. I also didn't strip you of your weapons. For some reason, you weren't wielding anyway. I was expecting you to eventually kick the elephant's ass since you were very well armored. Steel plate, I believe. I'm not touching you anymore, though, so don't worry. I'm going to move your bed back to a makeshift hospital so the doors have no reason to not feed you. I also made you a tomb. On the plus side, you did gain like four levels of wrestling. Mystic Mongol posted, Don't worry about it too much. After my initial fury, I realized it was indeed Pretty amusing. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. 
Shanty posted, It's amazingly pathetic to watch the awesome military might of the goblins mass against a dwarven outpost, run howling and screaming up to the main door, and then just stand there like lemons. Hey, sir, you clever, you read stinking dwarf runes, what this paper say? Out to us and to eat, uh, lunch, out to lunch, they out to lunch. Oh. Oh, well, I, I guess we wait here. Garn, stop out timing. Anyone bring a Zog stuff cards? Horse Raper posted, What that smell? It smell like burning elf tree home. Uh, shut up, sir. We trying to think. But Helm, look. What that? I, I think it fiery blood of the mountains. Oh, shit. Summer, 1061. Summer in Boat Murdered starts out fairly slow. There's no real action until midsummer or so when the human caravan arrives. I, tired of the human slow pace, decide to seize a good portion of their supplies. Another dwarf goes fey and begins working on some stupid creation. Meanwhile, I've assigned some woodcutters and begun wood production once again. The fey dwarf manages to get all his supplies and makes his masterpiece item. Anil Og, the glory of clubs. This is a chrysobarrel coffin. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. On the item is an image of a dwarf and an elephant in chrysobarrel. The elephant is striking down the dwarf. To further strengthen the fortress from invasion, notably from the trolls who seek to break down doors, I have refilled the interior moat. This moat may now serve as a defense if the doors break. All one must do is pull the lever in the nearby room. Summer ends as quickly as it came. Autumn, 1061. I feel a tinge of guilt for harming my fellow dwarf, Mystic Mongol, and crippling him. So I create him a semi-fancy tomb, too. Out of nowhere, a dwarf drowns. Adem Fathurit, farmer, has drowned. There's also a mysterious vomiting dwarf outside. Meanwhile, these fucking kobolds don't quit. The dwarven caravan and trade minister arrives. I speak to them and nothing's really gained. The goblins also do not quit. Snatcher, protect the children. Ah, damnation, a portion of the cave falls. The lava release is now blocked. I send a miner to go clear it out. Unfortunately, he burns his feet almost all the way off and falls to the floor nearby. He continues to burn until he dies of blood loss. Then he continues to smoke until he rots away. Fucking mandrels attack, and they're easily dispatched. And autumn ends. Winter, 1061. Low on food, I set many of our animals to the slaughter. I found the mysterious Autumn Vomiter. I do not know what I should do with him. Miasmas all over. Good thing that my surf citizens, my citizens, are all happy enough that it doesn't bother them much. Out of seemingly nowhere, Mystic Mongol, judicator of boat murdered, throws himself into the water and drowns. His remains are placed in his tomb, where they're defended by some traps. I begin to rebuild the military, slowly but surely. I also begin construction of cheap, affordable housing for the poor dwarves. I do not agree with this, as I feel those too weak to earn money should not be living. But my advisors assure me it's a good thing. There's a slight panic as the fortress runs out of food, Slater rectified by slaughtering many elephants. Winter's pretty much over. Here are my thoughts on the current surviving leaders. Emperor Sankus Gottenbomrik, otherwise known as Emperor Sankus Panther Whips, former ruler. Emperor Sankus Gottenbomrik has been ecstatic lately. She likes limestone, iron, star sapphire, jade, rope reed fabric, crosses, war hammers, gauntlets, amulets, chimeras for their terrifying features, and mangrove trees for their roots. When possible, she prefers to consume turtle, dwarven beer, and dwarven syrup. She absolutely detests purring maggots. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. 
She likes working outdoors, and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. Locus Ogeeth Morul, Locus Clampaged, Retired Ruler. Locus Ogeeth Morul has been ecstatic lately. He likes Moonstone, Iron, Aventurine, Mangrove, Pearl, Mules for their stubbornness, and Batman for their mystery. When possible, he prefers to consume Dwarven Rum and Dwarven Syrup. He absolutely detests purring maggots. He needs alcohol to get through the working day. He likes working outdoors and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. Megor Grendel Istenadam. Megor Grendel Watchful Cloisters. Retired Ruler. Megor Grendel Istenadam has been ecstatic lately. She likes obsidian, copper, gazelle leather, bolts, greaves, gloves, and batmen for their mystery. When possible, she prefers to consume cave fish, tuber beer, and cow's milk. She absolutely detests lizards. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. She's getting used to tragedy. Unknowing Momus Fikad. Unknowing Crypt Glazed. Eighth Circle War Mage. Unknowing Momus Fikad has been happy lately. She likes Rhyolite, Aventurine, Pearl, Cave Lobster Shell, the color Sepia, Diamonds, Bucklers, and Cobalts for their mischief. When possible, she prefers to consume Longland Beer. She absolutely detests Lizards. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. She likes working outdoors and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. In my year-long rule, I've accomplished many things. Much of the fortress is now carved out and smoothed. I've begun the foundation for a newer, stronger military. No longer will the goblin menace threaten us. I've ramped up food production and, because of it, have begun cutting down on the huge animal population. I restarted wood production, among other things. Sank has posted, out of seemingly nowhere, Mystic Mongol Judicator of Boat Motor throws himself into the water and drowns. Well, Mystic Mongol posted, right, just like the bookkeeper, after making someone's leather supply super valuable, mysteriously died in an attack. Just like the unpopular baron stepped on a rusty nail. Just like how the tax collector was found in his bed, mysteriously crushed to death by Ellen. Elephants. Never mind that several other dwarves were seen at the scene, next to the judicator on a rickety bridge, yet all claimed no one was within thirty feet of him at the time of the incident. Never mind that this happened days after his brand new tomb was completed. I am sure boat murdered authorities will declare this case closed in less than a day, and bung off to drink liquor and eat the fortress's dwindling elephant supplies. To whoever the next mayor winds up being, I suggest building a large farming cave and making a lot of farmers. The fortress is having some serious food issues. A plant gatherer of four to collect new seeds might not go amiss either. We might get lucky and get some rock bushes. I also humbly request the next captain of the guard be renamed Mystic Mongol, and be given the job description of Zombie. There's no better way to take post-mortem revenge than tying people to silk ropes for a month or two.